Realme phones of the past have been loaded with heavy bloatware and heavy software skins which have left many including myself with a sore taste after using a Realme device. Is the Realme 5 Pro an exception of this pattern or does it continue the trend of good hardware with poor software? Let's find out. The Realme 5 Pro aspires to look a lot more premium than its price tag would suggest, more evidently because of its crystal design on the back which almost looks like the faces of a diamond. It looks cool but it is a little overdone currently as almost every smartphone manufacturer has some form of a gradient blue finish available. However, it is still plastic back and will be susceptible to scratches over time. Thankfully, it, it doesn't have any scratches till now and also it doesn't feel very premium as the other mid-range smartphones with a metal or glass back. Overall, it's a functional design that isn't too simple or isn't too bulky. The Realme 5 Pro comes with a 48MP f1.7 primary lens, an 8MP ultrawide, a 2MP macro and a 2MP depth sensor. The daylight shots are pretty pretty good with tons of detail and low light shots are pretty amazing as well thanks to the larger sensor and f1.7. The video on the night has a bit of EIS which makes the things to wheeze a little bit but in the daytime it is pretty fine and it has warmer skin tones and warmer colors that's why it looks pretty amazing. It can also do slow motion at 120 fps and it looks stunning. But the colors are a bit to the oversaturated side which I don't personally prefer. Coming to the software, it rocks on the ColorOS 6.0.1 out of the box with the Android 9 and it is overwhelming a lot in a lot of areas. For example, as you open the notification panel, you would see that it is really overwhelming. You can slide from left for your smart assistant, which is also again really overwhelming. And if you're coming from a stockish Android experience, then you might be wondering what the heck is going on. I might prefer a launcher over this one. Coming to the performance, thanks to companies like Xiaomi, it is a really really good phone because of the Snapdragon 712 AIE chipset. It is based on the 10 nanometer and the benchmarks show that it is pretty good. And don't worry if you see the Geekbench score, this is the updated Geekbench algorithm which scores a lot less than it used to. It is Geekbench 5 and Snapdragon 712 is supposed to be 10% more powerful than the Snapdragon 710. It is basically an overclock version of the Snapdragon 710 and nothing else. It supports UFS 2.1 with 8 gigs of RAM of DDR4X and it also has really good 3G. It also has really good modems and it can play heavy 3D games like PUBG and Call of Duty. The speakers on the phone weren't too good, neither too bad, it was really good for a mid-range though, I would say they were loud but they lacked any sort of bass or treble but they were really really good for a mid-range device and I would take them anyway. The fingerprint sensor on the back was really really quick like super fast and that's because Oppo and Realme and OnePlus these Chinese brands are really famous for their fast fingerprint recognition and this was no exception. It worked pretty good. The display was 6.53 inches IPS LCD panel and I have nothing to say about it. It was really color accurate and was really working fine. Overall, the Realme 5 Pro is a genuine contender for the best budget smartphone thanks to its consistent performance over above average battery life and dependable cameras. There are barely any devices that can offer similar raw performance in this segment, whichever has one of the most contestants in the Realme offering. The build could have been a little better and sturdier, but this is all Realme has to offer right now. Hope they keep improving. This is Ray Dasan and I'm signing out. Peace out.